How's everybody doing? Wait a minute, we're at a TED Talk. How's everyone doing? Ready to have some fun? Is that too early? Thank you. New Orleans, Louisiana, home of crawfish etouffee, red beans and rice, muffaletta beignets, and also the birthplace of jazz music. Now, I have to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a jazz musician. Every accomplishment, every success, everything that I do in my life is based on the foundation of jazz music. Both my parents were music teachers and they got me interested in jazz at an early age. I have been a jazz musician since I've been 14 years old. And a lot of people think jazz is this thing where people get onto a stage and they just start blowing crazy notes and making stuff up. It's not true. You have to have a mastery of your instrument. You have to have a mastery of music theory. And it's important to understand that there are guardrails in jazz as well. Wynton Marsalis once said, America is going to be remembered for three things. Our unique contributions to the world. Our constitution, baseball, and jazz music. Jazz has taught me to take risks. It's taught me to make mistakes and realize that those mistakes are not personal flaws, but building blocks to something better. Jazz has taught me about collaboration. Jazz has taught me about sometimes you got to lead and sometimes you got to follow. It is everything about me and my personality and how I approach the world. I put myself out of comfort zones. I improvise. I look around at other musicians on the stage and I wonder what their contributions can be and how we can work together to make beautiful music together. I was thinking about this when I was wandering onto the floor of the Houston Astrodome in 2005. Because there's one other thing that New Orleans is known for. One of the worst natural disasters in the history of the world, Hurricane Katrina. Me and two friends were wandering around the floor of the Astrodome, which, if you remember, the Astrodome at one time was considered the eighth wonder of the world. Now, it was a facility where they bust the evacuees of New Orleans from Hurricane Katrina. I was wandering through a sea of humanity Sometimes I would walk up to people and there would be mothers, fathers, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, in-laws, all that had lived close to each other in the Ninth Ward. And we all walked up to different families and we had one question. Do you want to come to Denver, Colorado? 
I want to talk about doing something today. About doing something. So less than 24 hours before, I was sitting at a bar with some friends and I got a phone call from another friend named John Butler. And he said to me, he says, Andrew, he says, we have to do something. And I said, what are you talking about, John? He says, we have to do something. I said, well, what do you want to do? And he said, are you watching what's going on TV? And of course I was watching. Everybody was watching. Senior citizens being yanked off the roof in helicopters. Young kids being guided through floodwaters in laundry baskets by their parents. Atrocious scenes. This is not America. This is not what we expect. Well, we have to do something. What do you want to do? I'm not sure. We need to do something. I was an executive at Frontier Airlines, and I went to my boss, the CEO, Jeff Potter, and I said, Jeff, we want to take people back from Houston to Denver. We want to bring them back. And he says, any seat you have, we have available on a plane, you can bring them back. I called up another friend, Jim White, who was the head of communications at Volunteers of America, and another person, Christy, Christine Bonaro, who was the head of the Red Cross here. I told her our plans and that we were going to need people on the ground when we brought people back to Denver. Not a problem. Another person, Walter Eisenberg, the head of C uh, CEO of Sage Hospitality, we called him. He owns hotels. He said they would make rooms available for them. And then I called another friend of mine, a former intern of mine named Chad Ledove, who was a former FEMA official. He had just left FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and he actually had experience working at natural, national disasters. He gave me some advice, but then he also said, I'd like to come along. And with that, we took a plane to Houston. We had no idea what we were doing, what we were going to do, but we knew that we had this fire inside of us to do something. The first challenge was, how do we get into the Houston Astrodome? My friend Chad he still had his FEMA jacket on and his expired FEMA badge. And he said, just follow me. He says, just keep walking. <laughs> right up to the front door. They're with me. And we just kept walking. <laughs> and there we are on the floor of the Houston Astrodome, a sea of humanity, a sea of people who had lost their homes. Over 2,000 people died in Hurricane Katrina. Thousands more lost their homes, everything that they owned. And so, we decided we're going to go ask people if they want to come back to Denver. Now think how strange that is. A goofy white guy walks up to a family and says, would you like to come to Denver, Colorado? Now from, from New Orleans, the, the answer is going to be, well, I've never been to Denver. I hear it's cold. Are the Broncos going to win the Super Bowl? And we found out that that was not really a good approach to just come up and ask people if they wanted to go to Denver, but we started conversations with them, and people wanted to talk. This is the front line of a natural disaster. These are people who are full of despair, fear. Their faces are full of not knowing what's next, but there's also a face full of resilience. They told us their stories of how they escaped, we prayed with them, we cried with them, and we let them know that one of our, their neighbors in Denver, Colorado, a loving community of people were there for them, and that they could use that as a stepping stone to rebuilding their lives if they wanted to come with us to Denver. It was one of the most moving moments in my entire life, and as a result, we brought back 50 people in two trips, and there was a loving community of our citizens here in Denver, Colorado, waiting for them. They put them up in hotels, they put them up in apartments. Some landlords had empty houses that they let families stay at. There was no timeline. There was nothing that they needed that they wouldn't get to help them rebuild their lives. It could be a stepping stool for them to figure out what they wanted to do. Many of them did. They went back to New Orleans in a couple of weeks. Some of them stayed here for a few months. Some of them still live here to this day. This is me, Chad, and John Butler. It was one moment in our lives where we did something. We simply did something. 
And I know often we are so stuck in our screens, on our iPads, on our iPhones, on TikTok, on YouTube, on 30-second sound bites on the news. And I know this happens to a lot of people. It happens to me too. Natural disasters these days are a dime a dozen. And I know there's that voice in the back of our head saying, oh, we should do something. Maybe we should write a check. Maybe we should you know, do something. But there's also that other voice in the back of our head that's saying, somebody else is taking care of this. We don't have to get involved. I did get involved. One time in my life, I'm not a hero. I'm not a savior. I'm just an average person who made this trip to New Orleans with my friends. And here's my call to you all. We can all do something. We can all do something. We can get vaccinated. <laughs> That's something. We can open our hearts and our homes to refugees from Afghanistan. We can also volunteer. We can go to our favorite nonprofits. We can donate. We can organize. We can protest. We can all do something. It's a requirement as citizens of this country that we do something. So in closing, somebody had said earlier this morning that we all have this little light. And if you know the words to this, feel free to sing along. You can clap too. This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Thank you very much. <laughs>